I've literally been sitting here in front of my camera for the past 30 minutes waiting to start recording because I really didn't want to make this video. I'm honestly very embarrassed about the game I'm about to show you. If you're new to the channel, I have an over-the-board classical rating that sits between 1950 and 2000 ELO, which essentially makes me a semi-professional chess player. <laughs> I dedicate a lot of time to this game. Every, every single day I play this game in some way or another, which makes, which, which makes this video all the more uncomfortable to make. However, in the name of authenticity and transparency, I felt like it would be somewhat misleading for me not to make a video about this. And even though, like I said, I'm incredibly embarrassed about it, I hope that for you guys it can be kind of inspiring because by seeing this game, I hope it can show that many of the chess players that you may look up to you know, they also make these horrible mistakes and you should never consider yourself a bad chess player because you've made one bad move or played one bad game. That being said, I've put off the analysis for long enough, so let's get into the game. So this game was actually played against one of my boys from the gym and we were in the gym this morning and he knows I play chess and he's recently been getting into it. And for the past like month or so, he's been trying pretty hard with it. He's been stuck at around 400 ELO. And he asked me, yo, do you want to play a game? You know, we were having a bit of banter between each other. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll smoke you, bro. Like, why are you even bothering? So we played a rapid game, 15 minutes plus 10 seconds. And granted, I was playing in between sets of pull-ups. But that is really no excuse for this game. So I opened with e4, and my boy played e5. I went for the Vienna. He went knight f6. He does not know openings. Like, he has no idea that this is an actual opening, because, like I said, he is a pretty much just a beginner. <laughs> uh, f4 is the move. I'm not going to delve too much into it. If you take, then e5. Knight's forced back. Position's good for white. He plays d6, which is a logical move. If you take take, black has a very good position. The queen is open. The bishop can get out onto the long diagonal. White should not be taking. Knight f3 threatens the pawn. Bishop g4 is played by black. And I go bishop c4. Bishop c4 is a big threat. Because if my opponent plays a move like bishop e7, then I can take. And if you take back, then bishop takes f7 check. This is what I was looking for. Very common idea in the Vienna. And if king takes, then knight e5 comes with a check. The king retreats, and then you win back the piece with the pawn on f7 and the pawn on e5 as your extra material and the king can't castle. So that was my idea with bishop c4 and whether, whether my opponent actually saw this, which is very unlikely, or he just got lucky, he stops the threat with bishop takes f3. You can also stop the threat with a move like knight c6 because if takes then you can take with the knight, and it doesn't work because the knight defends f7. And if you take back with the pawn and bishop takes, king takes, then knight e5 doesn't work because just knight takes, and I'm down two pieces. So, takes f3, it works. Queen takes, knight c6. Here I got a little bit spooked. Um, I was very worried about knight d4. And I wanted to play d3, but then knight d4, my plan was queen f2, but then knight g4, and my queen is kind of stuck, and I can't really continue defending f2 very well. I can play queen d2, then there's ideas of queen h4, and if g3, knight f3 check. So, instead, to stop that, and by the way, the computer says queen d1, but 
it's not a very human way to play. So instead of that, I went knight back to e2 to control the d4 square. Not the best move, but I thought it was practical and stopped my opponent from having much play. Bishop e7, d3, castle, and I go bishop e3. Apparently it's a mistake because of e takes f4, bishop takes f4, and knight e5. And here I would have to trade these bishops because I can't really lose my light squared bishop. And, I don't know, the position's alright. Although I prefer it for white because of knight g3, knight f5. So that's just personal preference. Computer's coming up with some crazy lines like b5. What? And then rook b8. Mental. Um, but that was my idea behind bishop e3. My opponent goes knight b4, threatening knight takes c2 with a check on the king and the rook. So the natural move is bishop b3. Well, bishop b3 to defend the c2 pawn and keep the bishop on the long diagonal. And here it's very difficult for black to actually make a move. Because if I have too much time, I might transfer my knight to g3 and f5. I might play f5 myself to lock the structure. I'm going to go c3 or a3 to kick the knight out. I'm probably going to castle kingside to get the rook on the f file. I can maybe even castle queenside and go for ideas of like g4, g5. So he goes d5, which loses a pawn. And there's only one way to win a pawn here. If you take on d5, then e takes f4 comes from an attack on the bishop. And after you take back... You do have three defenders on the d5 pawn compared to black's three attackers. But this is a loose pawn. The bishop feels a bit silly on e3. With the pawns around it gone, it feels a bit vulnerable. So the computer doesn't mind the position for black here. Much cleaner is to take on e5 with an attack on the knight. My opponent goes d takes e4. And you can't take the knight because the queen hangs. So the move is d takes e4. And the problem is that the knight doesn't really have any forward movement. Because all of its squares going forward are controlled by my queen and my pawn. So he's got to play a move like knight d7. Retreating. I can kick this knight out. And probably castle queenside to pin the knight to the queen. I mean, maybe you want to defend e5 first, but you get my point. It's a very pleasant position for white. But my opponent goes knight h5, which just hangs a knight. So I'm a piece up. And you might be wondering, Alex, how on earth did you lose this position? Did you clickbait us? The queen and the bishop are aligning on f2. You're going to castle kingside and get this rook on the f file. Black has no play. How on earth did you lose this? Well, between my, <laughs> my sets at the gym, uh, you know, listening to my hype music, not really focusing too much. Here I'm like, oh, I've got the game in the bag. Uh, this, this is easy. You know, I can go trash talk him after I beat him and we're going to have some good banter. Queen d7 is played, which develops the queen. I castle kingside, pressure on f2, f7 even. Queen c6, attacks e4 and c2. I go a3, which poses a problem to the knight. Because if the knight retreats to a6, then the knight's out of the game. f7 is going to fall. And if knight takes c2... Here I should just take on f7. And it's best to take with the rook. And I did consider this. And I saw rook f7. Queen f7 just wins a bishop. But king h8. And here, 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 here. I can just go bishop f2. And I'm sound. I'm up a piece. My queen is very active. His king is exposed. I don't know why I didn't just go for this. This is so simple. 
but I was trying to be too fancy. I wanted to keep pieces on the board. I played rook a c1, trying to win this knight because it's pinned to the queen. A move like knight takes e3, rook takes c6, and I'm just up a queen. My opponent goes queen takes e4, which is a nice move. Because if I take, then he can take on e3, king h1, g6 stops mate on h7, and I'm still up a piece. I'm still just up a piece. My attack's fizzled out, but it doesn't matter. I've secured the piece. This is an easy variation for me to play, and there's no reason not to play this. Again, I tried to be fancy. I went bishop f2. I wanted everything. I wanted to win this knight, because the knight really struggles to find an escape. b4 is controlled. b4 is controlled. The only move is knight e3. Because the queen defends e3. And here, my thinking was if I take on e3, then queen takes e3, the king moves, and the bishop hangs. And my opponent wins the piece back. He's actually posing some problems here with the move knight to e3. So the best fit plan for white because the queen and the knight actually align to attack g2 in threat and mate. I completely missed this. I, I, I just didn't even notice. Here I've got to play queen f3 or queen h3 to defend g2. Black can take on f1. But king takes f1. And I'm fine. There is the move bishop c2 here which skewers the queen and the checkmating square on h7. So black would be forced to give up a queen here if he takes the rook. And in my head, I did not see the attack on g2. I just didn't even notice it. It wasn't on my radar for whatever reason. Maybe I had too much caffeine in my system <laughs> and my songs were just, you know, blasting in my ears wasn't focusing. I've got 13 minutes. There's, there's really no excuse. Really isn't. And like I said, bishop takes e3 doesn't really work. And in my head, I was like, okay, the knight's under attack. If I can force this queen to move, then I'm going to win the knight. So in my head, I'm like, huh, knight g3. I spent five seconds on this move. Five seconds. Well, actually 15, because you get 10 seconds after every move. 15 seconds I spent on this move. And it's a great move. It's a great move. Because the queen is forced to move, and this knight is very compromised. A move like queen f4. This knight is under attack by my bishop. I can play rook takes c7. Just infiltrate and put more pressure on the f7 pawn. The queen is tied down to the defense. Knight f1. I can take on e7. Or I can just take the knight. It's a very pleasant position. Knight g3 is a great move. Except queen takes g2 is mate. And I lose to a player rated under 400 elo. Don't get me wrong. He, he played well. He posed some practical problems for me. And I just I, I just missed it. I fully just missed it. And, you know, difficult video to make because it's tough to, you know, admit that I fully just blundered a mate in one to a 400 rated player. <laughs> if, if my mate ever sees this video, then um, he's, he, he'll be pretty happy. I'm sure. I mean, don't get me wrong. I got so much. Um, he, he, he made fun of me so much afterwards, and I don't blame him. <laughs> My logic was that he didn't play well. I just played horribly. I just made a horrible move. But at the end of the day, I did blunder a mate in one. He threatened a mate in one. And that's chess for you. That really is chess. Just because you're higher rated doesn't mean you're going to win. You still have to actually play the moves on the board. Like I said, I hope this inspires you guys to like actually, 
you know, not get really scared when you're playing against someone higher rated than you. Because people mess up. People always mess up, no matter what. And even if I'm even if I should beat him 99 times out of 100 because of our rating disparity, there is still that one game where I make that one bad move and lose. And and just blunder mate in one. If you've made it to the end of the video, then thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me suffer, and I hope you noticed how uncomfortable I am making this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Drop a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it as I try to grow this channel. I've been really enjoying it, and I've been really loving the support from you guys. With that being said, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope you enjoyed the video.